Hello everybody, this is the creator of Any Bomb Nation here, and yes, it's that time again. It's time for me to do another video as a video uh, for an entry into another contest by the great YouTuber File91E. Um, you might remember a couple months ago for Halloween I posted a video, or around Halloween, I posted a video in which I talked about my top ten Disneyland and Disneyland Resort attractions, covering both Disneyland and Disney's California Adventure, which that video helped me get second place, to which I also made a video when I got the package and I unboxed it and you got my reactions. Um, in case you didn't see, there was a video that he did um, uh, two weeks ago from the time of recording, it's about two, two and a half weeks ago, where I sent him as a thank you gift, a thank you early Christmas gift, I gave him a certain item that I will be discussing further down further down the line in this video, but if you've already seen the video, then you already know what it is, but, um, so yeah, so, in effort to try and keep the video not an hour long, like the last one was, which, again, I wasn't even aware it was an hour long until I had finished editing it, uh, before I filmed the outro, and I realized, oh my god, this video is an hour long, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I apologize again for that, because I did not expect that to be an hour long. Um, hopefully this one will not be an hour long, I'm going to try to, um, but in an effort to do that, I'm going to talk about five, five or six Christmas gifts, Disney-specific Christmas gifts, that I've received over the years that um, have special meaning to me, um, which again is, uh, will get me, you know, this is per an entry into the contest. Um, if you want to participate in the contest, a link to the video will be in the description with all the rules and you know and whatnot and you know again a link to his channel, Final Linda Winnie, who's a great YouTuber. I, if you love Disney and anime, you know, basically Disney, you've got to subscribe to this guy, at least check him out. So yeah, his link will be in the description as well. So without further ado, let's get started. Now the first gift, um I also I should preface this with um I I like Disney movie and video game gifts. And, uh, so, all except for one on this list, the aforementioned gift that I gave to Final Nine Twenty, um, will be mainly video game and uh, and movie related. So, um, yeah, because I'm not really I'm not a big plush guy. But again, let's let's get to the point here. So, um, so the first entry, the first gift that has meaning to me, um, actually the first two are um. A bar pair of gifts. Now you're you're looking at one of them on the screen right now, um, and that's because it's the first one. It is Epic Mickey for the Nintendo Wii. Um, I remember seeing the ads for this game and all the behind the scenes info. And this came out, I think, in 07. I'm trying to look on the box. Uh, 2006. So wow, this is this is over six years old already. I'm about eight years old, or maybe that's no wait, that's the Wii. Never mind, never mind. That's my bad. The Wii came out in no six. It's like, I think this came out in no eight. Um, so yeah, um, but I remember seeing the ads for this game, especially the big ads that had um, you know, it was basically Oswald the Lucky Rabbit is coming back, and I was actually one of those weird kids who was a Disney fan who knows who Oswald was. You know, I knew who Oswald was. I didn't know that much about him, but I knew who Oswald. I knew he existed. Um, because I watched a lot of documentaries, um, about it. Uh, but I remember playing the heck out of this game. Uh, basically, if you don't know what the game is, I'll give you a quick sort of synopsis. Essentially, uh, uh, Mickey is thrusted into this, uh, world they call the Wasteland, um, where it's basically all the forgotten Disney things, characters, uh, park things, icons, etc., are all amalgamated into this world called the Wasteland, and Mickey incidentally causes a thinner disaster, which causes the world to become kind of messed up, so it's Mickey's job to kind of go around the world and fix it. Um, I can fix it, fix it, Felix. Uh, sorry, I'm a little scatterbrained right now. Um... Uh, and one of the big grabs about this game for a lot of people was it, it sort of used the motion controls. And actually what it did was they actually sold a separate uh, Wii remote 
uh, sort of nunchuck thing that, or it was a Wii Remote or a nunchuck thing that was a paintbrush because that's what Mickey uses in the game. Uh, and you would press a button and it would either do blue, which blue stuff, which was paint, which filled stuff in, or green stuff, which was called thinner, which, like the name implies, took stuff away. That was a big draw for this game. Um, I still stand by it being one of the most beautiful games on the Wii, and one of the best. Um, apparently on the back of this box, uh, G4 TV, uh, quoted as being the best Wii game, and I completely agree. Now, the second gift that, you know, means something to me was the sequel. Uh, I got it, I got it on the, uh, Xbox 360. Uh, this was a couple of years after. I think this was in, I think this was in, uh, 12, 2012, when this came out. But, uh, this was, it's called Epic Mickey 2, The Power of Two. And what this essentially was, was, again, it was the sequel, but they draw to this one, whereas in the first game, uh, Epic Mickey, it was a single-player experience. This time, it was a dual-play uh, experience. Uh, each player, one player takes control of Mickey, the other one takes control of Oswald, one has the power of the paintbrush, the other one has the power of Oswald's remote. Uh, and it was a musical, too. Which, when I first heard it was a musical, I'm like, wait, they're going to do a musical video game? And I knew Disney could do it, because Disney's done a lot of good things with music. But I was very shocked that this would be uh, a musical game. And actually, the music in it actually isn't that bad. The only negative I can really say about the game that kind of... It still resonates with me, because I love the Epic Mickey franchise, and I really hope that someday they'll do a third installment, because of the one reason that I kind of hate this game for spoiler territory if you haven't played it. At the end of the game, um, you see I, I believe you see a bunch of Peets who kind of you know insinuate that there's going to be a third game, that they're going to start an uprising or something like that. Um, I actually remember I got through the game and that cutscene's on, I'm like, wait, what? Um, and another a little minor negative is that this game is actually, a lot, in my opinion, a lot shorter, but um, it has a lot of good things in it. Uh, there's a lot more voice acting, for, uh, number one. I think it was actually one of the... It, actually, no, it was the first time Oswald was given a voice. I think by Frank Walker of uh, Aladdin, Abu fame, and a bunch of other things. I think it was Scooby-Doo 2, um, among other things. But, you know, you have, you have a fight with Elliot the Dragon. Uh, not from Pete's Dragon, but from the Main Street Electrical Parade. Um, See, so yeah, there's a lot of good things about this game. And it, 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 it honestly was one of the best Christmas gifts, for, you know, from Disney that I got. It's just because of how much I loved the first game. Um, but if I had to tell you to pick one, like if you're if you're going to get something for a Disney fan, I would recommend getting Epic Mickey One, just because I think it's a lot more it's a lot more enjoying of an experience. But that's not anything to say. If you already own Epic Mickey One, get Epic Mickey Two. It's a really good game, um, and it it, really, it resonates with me because you know. It was, it was finally a game where Disney was like, we know we have a lot of hardcore fans out there, we're going to make a game that, to the average player, is fun, but for the really you know, nitty-gritty Disney fan, there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of in-jokes you know, in and in, uh, you know, stuff in the background that, um, you know, they'll get. I actually, if I recall, um, uh, the part, yeah, in the, uh, I'm looking at the box and it has it. Um, in both games, um, since they take place in sort of Disneyland-ish sort of a location, the partner statue, which is usually Walt and Mickey in the Wasteland, is actually uh, Walt and Oswald, which is a really nice sort of twist on that idea. So, I mean, yeah, that's these two games are ones that really resonate with me, and that I always do come back to play, and they really did make a good Alright guys, so chugging along here, um, we're going to get into an another game that's relatively recent, um, that made a really good Christmas. Uh, it's called Disney Infinity. If you haven't heard what this is, essentially take the idea of Toy Story and make it a video game. That's basically what it is. Um, but the game is, if you ever played a game like Skylanders, this game is sort of similar to that. Um, in this, I got the starter pack. And in the Star Pack, you get um, Sully, Monsters uh, University Sully, Mr. Incredible, and Jack Sparrow from Pirates. And you get a clear uh, 
a crystal thing that unlocks basically three games in one. You get an Incredibles world, you get a Monsters University world, and you get a Pirates world. I was ecstatic when I got this for Christmas because, you know, the, not only does the game look beautiful, uh, you know, which is to be expected, um, but each world is so detailed. And I think a big draw for a lot of people was the toy box, which was first introduced actually in, a, in a, uh, another video game, Toy Story 3, a video game, um, but not to this extent. Um, essentially, in the toy box, they give you a bunch of, uh, you know, they give you land patterns, and they give you, you know, buildings, and they give you, yeah, they give you the Agrabah Palace, um, and a lot, bunch of things for Agrabah, um, and you basically create, you can create your own worlds. Um, which is a lot of fun, but in my opinion, the best part of the game are these are these toys and these worlds that they give you the playsets. Um, because a lot, of, you know, the, the, they have their own little stories, none of which I really think are canon. Um, but you know, I've collected a lot, of, not a lot, but a few of them. Uh, I have the Lone Ranger and Tonto and their playset. Uh, sorry, I also have Agent P from Phineas and Ferb, and I have Sorcerer Mickey. Because you can't have Disney Infinity without Swords or Mickey. So, I mean, uh, and I, actually another draw, actually one of the funniest things for me, was also I got two bags, uh, blind bags, that uh, come with these uh, uh, little cards that you can put on a base that unlock things in the game. Uh, that I have like a Rapunzel tangled sort of uh, land, or not land, um, terrain that I got with the game. In, in the blind bags, I got Cinderella's carriage, which was meh, meh. Um, two Fix-It Felix uh, health things, which basically give you a lot more health. And the one that really was a big, you know, sort of happy thing for me was Mickey's car, because uh, Final 91 again, shout out to, uh, to, to Final 91 when he played it on his channel, he got the Mickey's Jalopy, and I loved it, and I, when, I, when I finally saw it, and I finally got it, I was ecstatic, Cause I, and I had Mickey too, so I could put Mickey in Mickey's car, um, which was a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, they've, came out, they've come out uh, recently with a uh, 2.0 edition, I haven't got that yet, um, I'm still waiting to see if it's worth it. Um, but yeah, if you're a Disney fan, I really am shocked that you wouldn't have Disney Infinity, or uh, either version, because I think they're they're both really good games, and I would totally recommend uh, giving one to anyone who's a Dis uh, Disney fan. Uh, so yeah. All right, guys. So m moving along here to the final two, we have arguably one of the most treasured things I've ever gotten. It's Walt Disney Treasures. Uh, Mickey Mouse in Living Color, Volume 2. Um, now, if you don't know what these are, uh, these were DVD sets that came out, I think in the early 2000s, um, that basically, uh, this one that I have in, in particular, are all the Mickey Mouse shorts from 1939 to 1995. Um, with, and uh, it has a Fantasia a lithograph of the original poster, which is cool. Uh, uh, they have introductions by Leonard Maltin, uh, and he comes in even during the cartoons, but during them, before them, and basically says, you know, we don't agree. If anything, it's not PC. Um, like there's one, there's a cartoon where Mickey gets a magic lamp, and inside the magic lamp is a genie, and his voice is kind of risque. It's a, it's a very stereotypical African American voice. Um, that would have you would hear um, around that time. Um, they even comment it was not uncommon to hear this sort of portrayal. Um, but we, you know, we've learned that it's not, you know, it's not politically correct and it's not, you know, ethically or morally sound to depict them these, way, these you know, this way. Um, so he's basically coming on to tell you that what you're about to see might not include things that are PC. Um, which they're skippable, so if you don't really care about it, you can just skip over him. Um, but I think one of the big draws for this, all the special features, um, one of the coolest ones, actually, and one of the ones that really was a highlight for me on the, when I got it, was that there, uh, there was a special 
for Mickey's, I think, 80th birthday or something like that, or 60th birthday or some well, Mickey's birthday, essentially, where during the commercials there was this stop-motion-esque short, I guess you could call it, with a bunch of Mickey memorabilia coming to life, um, to the, I think to the tune of the Mean Street Electric Parade, though not the actual soundtrack, but the soundtrack it's based off of. Um, and looking back at it, it's amazing how they pulled it off. I, I believe it's all stop motion, because I don't think at this point they had CG technology, or, you know, the CG effects, to, to make it really believable. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, these... That, that, that short alone is worth for this, because I don't think you can get that anywhere else. Um, there are the highlights, too, that you, um... They give you all the recent... Up to 1995, so you get Prince and the Pauper, which, when I got this, that was my first time seeing it, and it actually wasn't that bad. Um, you get Mickey's Christmas Carol, and you get Runaway Brain, um... Which, which I didn't own Mickey Christmas, Mickey's Christmas Carol, so that was a perfect thing to watch on that day when I got it. Um, but all the old Mickey cartoons are good, too. Um, I think they also include um, rare video of Walt doing Mickey's voice, or, or I think that might actually know that, that might actually be an Easter egg that he had to find. But when you did find it, it was actually really cool to see. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's all I gotta say. It was a really good find uh, that I got, that I, you know, uh, and I was really happy to get it. Um, because I, I love the Walt Disney Treasure sets. I can't boast about them enough. Um, and I actually have to do a Creator Speaks episode on these sets and how good they are. Um, so, yeah. Uh, let's... Alright, guys, so I know I said, uh, when I was talking about, uh, the Walt Disney Treasures, that, um, there was two more. Uh, so we're gonna get to the two more. Um, the first one, I alluded to in the opening that one of them was something I got found on your one And that is a um, Funko Pop um, figure. For him, I got Roger Rabbit, um, which he said in the video was one of his favorite movies, so I'm really glad I picked that one. Um, but the one that I received, um, that the reason why it has so much meaning to me, partly is a reason that I'll get to after this in the final gift, but, um, for now, it was a genie figure. Um, uh, I got, uh, the Funko Pop, uh, genie, uh, figure, you know, genie from Aladdin. Um, ever since I've seen Aladdin, I've loved the genie character. The genie character remains one of my favorite characters that they've ever done. You know, because I just think Robin Williams' performance was just immaculate and nobody can really top it. Um, except for maybe James Monroe Iglehart, who is doing it now on Broadway. I think he's the only one who could probably surpass it, but he definitely comes close. He definitely matches Robin. Um, you know, may he rest in peace. But, I mean, the figure when I got it, I mean, I, I took this thing out of the packaging and I looked at it and I'm like, it was a really clean figure. It looked like it should. Like, nothing about it looked off. I mean, you could say that the black, you know, the black eyes the only thing that looks off about it, but that's the way they do their figure, so I'm not going to say it's a bad figure because they use, you know, they do black dots for the eyes. Um, but, I mean, you know, for a person who loves the genie as a character, to get this for Christmas was definitely something that I really did enjoy. And it's definitely up there as one of the, um, one of my favorite gifts. So, I mean, now you might be asking, um, now, another reason why this has so much resonance with me is because of what I'm about to get into. So, in effort to kind of uh, not repeat myself, just assume that whatever I'm about to say for the final gift still holds true for here. So, let's get to that final gift. Alright guys, so the last present we have here is something that really truly means a lot to me because of the history that it has with me. Now, when I was young, um... And I would, you know, my, and my parents would tell me, oh, oh, watch this movie, you gotta watch this movie. I would ever rarely listen to them. Because, again, they're, they're your parents, you know, you, the movies they show you, they don't really look appealing. But then there was this one time where they showed me Aladdin, uh, you know, Disney's Aladdin from 1992. And I was just enthralled by this movie. I thought, you know, the animation, you know, you had the villain Jafar, 
the songs, the genie, Robin Williams, bless his heart, uh, may, you know, may he rest in peace, you know, it, you know, it, 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 it blew my mind that this was possible, and, from, and then, a couple of years later, I got, um, Aladdin, the Platinum Edition, I think it came out in either 03 or 04, and on that DVD set, it had a really long sort of sit down with the cat, not with the cast, but some of the cast and the crew uh, in the Hyperion Theater, which not, which hosted the Aladdin musical and still does to this day. Um, where they talked about the making of the movie and how sort of con sort of, sort of concepts came in. And when I and I, I sat there watching it, and honestly, it really made me intrigued with the art form because for years I'd watched this movie and I'm like, oh, this is, this, it, you know, it's magical. And then to finally sit, basically really sit down and listen to these people talk about their creation, it really did give me a whole new appreciation for the art form that has never really left me. You know, I've been on a career path to become, an, you know, an animator because of this movie and because of their involvement and how much they talked about it on that set that's how much that it you know the, what they said meant because it just it, it was enchanting you know when you watch the movie for the first time and then to hear these people talk about well we were going to do this and see the movie that almost was and then you look at what you finally got and you're like wow I'm happy they made these choices and uh, I'm sorry they didn't you know I'm sorry that they took these choices out it just it really just it made me appreciate animation as a legitimate art form, and I still stand to this day that animation is one of the best ways, if not the best way, to tell a movie. Because you can, the sky's the limit. Um, and I don't think that I would be on that path. I don't think that I would appreciate the art form and be where I am now if it wasn't for that movie and that cast and that crew and for that set, that Platinum Edition DVD set, for showing me, for lack of a better word, that whole new world. And I never, I, I just, I haven't forgotten it, and I don't think I ever will. So I, you know, I, I that, that is honestly, out of all of these, one of the best Disney Christmas gifts, if not the best Disney Christmas gift, that I have ever received and probably ever will. So, yeah, that's that's all I gotta say on that one. So, yeah. So, yeah, guys, that was my top six or seven favorite Disney-related Christmas gifts. I told you this video wouldn't be as long as the last one, though it's admittedly still a little long. Um, just running through the gifts again, very quickly. Um, I talked about Epic Mickey and its sequel, Epic Mickey and the Power of Two. I talked about Disney Infinity. I talked about the Walt Disney Treasures uh, volume of Mickey Mouse in Living Color, Volume 2. Uh, the Funko Disney Pop vinyl uh, uh, statue of Genie uh, from Aladdin. And Aladdin uh, Platinum Edition, the Platinum Edition DVD. Um, so, yeah, this was a very interesting topic to talk about. So, again, I mean, as an entry for the contest, I thank Final 91E for this opportunity because, again, it was a really interesting topic to talk about. Uh, not something I would have thought about until now. Um, again, a link if you want to participate in the contest. The rules video will be in the description along with a link to his channel. I urge you to check him out if you haven't already. Um, and, yeah, guys, um, just... In case you're watching this, um, there is, I'm going to try hard to make a episode of Animal Nation for Christmas. I've already started making it. It's already, you know, it's, yeah, I'm writing and editing, editing it now. So I'm trying my hardest to make it for a Christmas episode, guys. Um, so if you're just wondering about that, I'm throwing that out there. Uh, but if you don't care, then I just bored you with some information. Sorry. Um, so yeah, until next time guys, this has been the creator of Anybody Nation, signing off.